Graphing equations and inequalities in two dimensions is a big part of algebra, particularly working with lines. You can get a lot of information from a picture. Today we will start this journey by looking at how to label points in two dimensions. So let's get started. So let's start with a quick review. When we're talking about one dimension, we have a single number line that continues on forever in both directions. And if this is the x number line, we would label this point x equal to 4. But what is one dimension? We can view one dimension as a train on a track. It can move forward and backwards along that track, but it can't go side to side. But when that person gets off the train, he's probably not going to want to stay on that track. Instead, he's going to move away from the track. How do we label this new position? We're going to start with one number line, and then take another number line, and rotate it 90 degrees. Creating the Cartesian plane, or what's sometimes called the XY plane. The Cartesian plane is named after René Descartes, a French philosopher and mathematician. One of his goals was to unite geometry and algebra. Now in algebra, we have nice equations like y equals x plus 4. And you're going to be seeing a lot of equations like this. And this equation represents a line. A line that looks like this. So geometry is a great way to visualize algebraic equations. And algebra is a great way to manipulate the graphs we see in geometry. A plane is a two-dimensional space formed by two number lines that intersect at right angles. The right angle is 90 degrees, and two lines that intersect at a right angle are perpendicular to each other. It is common to call the horizontal axis the x-axis, and the horizontal axis is the one that goes kind of right, left, right, left, as opposed to up, down, up, down. Now, one way to remember the direction of the horizontal axis is to think of the horizon. And the horizontal axis starts with the horizon. And at least on my planet, the horizon goes from right to left, left to right, not up and down. Now, the vertical axis is sometimes called the y-axis. And again, vertical is going up and down. One way to remember vertical is that vertical starts with a V. And that V kind of points up. Much like the vertical axis goes up and down. So you can remember that the vertical axis starts with a V, the V points up, and the vertical axis goes up and down. And then the horizontal does the opposite. Or remember that the horizontal axis, well, the word starts with the horizon, and the horizon goes from left, right, left, right. And then the opposite, the vertical, goes up and down. You only have to remember one of those tricks. Now, because this is called, these are often called the x and y axes. The plane is sometimes called the xy plane. So looking at some more vocabulary, the origin is where the two lines intersect. So this point in the middle. And when the two lines intersect, they cut the plane into four sections. And these sections are called quadrants. 
and we label the quadrants one through four, and typically we use Roman numerals to label these quadrants. And they're labeled one through four, starting in the upper right quadrant, and then moving counterclockwise through all four quadrants, ending in the lower right quadrant with quadrant four. So counterclockwise, think of a clock. And when you have a clock, the hands of the clock move in a particular direction. And that direction is called clockwise. And sometimes that's abbreviated just CW. Again, the hands of a clock move clockwise. When we add counter in front of it, we're gonna go in the opposite direction. So the opposite direction in which the hands are moving. And that's called counterclockwise, and that can be abbreviated CCW. So how do we label points on this plane? Now each point is gonna be identified by two numbers, and those numbers are called coordinates. Those two coordinates are the x-coordinate, our abscissus, and the y-coordinate, also known as the ordinate. These two terms are not commonly used. You will most likely always hear x-coordinate and y-coordinate. And then together, these two numbers form an ordered pair. So you have two numbers, a pair of numbers, and the order matters. We're gonna list the x-coordinate first, and then the y-coordinate. So here we have a point on our plane. How would we label this point? So first we're gonna find the x-coordinate. And we do this by dropping a line to the x-axis. This line will be perpendicular to the x-axis or parallel to the y-axis. And in this case, that line hits the x-axis at three. So the x-coordinate for this ordered pair is three. And then we're gonna do the same with the y-coordinate. We're gonna put a line from the point to the y-axis. This line will be perpendicular to the y-axis and parallel to the x-axis. In this case, that number is five. So the y-coordinate is five. The ordered pair three, five has an x-coordinate of three and a y-coordinate of five. So let's practice a few. So here we're gonna label each of these five points on the plane and determine in which quadrant each point is located. So one of those Roman numerals. We're also going to assume integer coordinates. Because again, we could have fractions, we could have decimals, but these points all have integer coordinates. Even if my point is not perfectly aligned. We'll start with this green point in the upper left-hand corner. So we'll look down to this x-axis. And so that has a value of negative seven, so the x-coordinate is negative seven, and the y-coordinate is eight. And this is quadrant two. For our red point, again, we'll look for the x-coordinate first. We're gonna drop down to the x-axis. That's the number four. And then moving to the y-axis, that's the number two. And this is the first quadrant. Moving on to the orange point. Here our x-axis is five. 
and then moving to the y-axis, we're at negative 5. And this is quadrant 4. So looking at the purple point, if we extend the line to that x-axis, it'll cross at negative 3. So our x-coordinate is negative 3. And then extending that line to the y-axis, it's going to cross at negative 1. So the y-coordinate is negative 1. And this is in quadrant 3. Finally, for the blue point, now this point does not move either right or left off of that y-axis. So if we extend up this y-axis, it's crossing the x-axis at 0. So we have a x-coordinate of 0. And then the y-coordinate is negative 8. A point that has an x-coordinate of 0 is on the y-axis. So this point is on the y-axis, and so therefore it is not within a quadrant. A great way to learn is to practice on your own. We will discuss in a bit, but go ahead and pause your screen and do these five problems. So looking at the green point first, we have an x value of 8 and a y value of negative 3. So our ordered pair is 8, negative 3. And then this is quadrant 4. For the blue point, our x value is 3, y value is 6, and this is quadrant 1. For the red point, our x value is negative 9, we're to the left of the origin. And the y value is 0. We did not go up or down. Anytime you have a y value of 0, you're on the x-axis. So this point is not in a quadrant. The purple point. So this point moves neither right or left, nor up or down. This is the origin, and the origin has an ordered pair of 0, 0. The origin is also not in a quadrant. Then for the orange point, if we move up to the x-axis, it's going to cross at x equal to negative 1. So our x-coordinate is negative 1. And to the y-axis, it crosses at negative 7. So we have the ordered pair negative 1, negative 7, and that's in the third quadrant. Continue practicing labeling points in two dimensions, and I'll see you in the next video.